Welcome, bent riders around the world. My name is Gary Solomon, and you're watching the Laid Back Bike Report. Everybody, great to have you with us today. Let me tell you what's coming up on today's show. We're going to kick it off with Hans's news report. He's not able to be with us live today, but he did send us uh, an update on what's going on in the bent world. So we look forward to showing you that. Our featured segment this month is Northland Velo, a new velomobile uh, outfit in the Midwest of the USA, a very ambi ambitious young fella named Ben Park runs it, and he'll be with us to talk all about velomobiles, and we look forward to that. We uh, are also very excited about heading to Germany again this year. Trey and I, we heading down there to Spetsy in Lochring in Germany, and we had a chance to sit down with the uh, three fellas that are running Spetsy again this year. And we'll bring you everything they have to say about what's new and exciting and why you should attend the world's biggest recumbent show. Uh, that'll be great to, to show you as well. And lastly, uh, the Pacific Trike Fest is coming back. So uh, we were there a few years ago on the first one, and uh, Mel Berger will be showing us what's coming up this year. Uh, lots of trikes, obviously, and there's lots of, it's like a festival there that... Uh, doesn't happen very often, so we look forward to show, showing you Mel's uh, shtick there as well. All right, let's talk about the crew that is with me today. Uh, Trey, can you pop everybody on the screen? Good. So, uh, first of all, uh, from Raymond, Mississippi, it is Trey Burgoyne. Trey, how you doing today, pal? I'm doing awesome. It's a great spring day here in Mississippi. Good. Well, yeah, Trey's going to be running the show here today. Larry's off, so... Uh, we wish Trey lots of luck. I'm sure he'll do fine. Also, uh, down uh, in Alfred Station, New York, really across, I would say, it it is the bicycle man himself, Peter Stahl. Peter, hi. Thanks for being with us again. Hi. Good to see you. Great. And, of course, there's Ben Park, and we will have his segment and talk to him a little bit later. All right. How can you participate in the Laid Back Bike Report? Well, uh, the live chat is running on Facebook and on YouTube right now. So you can talk amongst yourselves. You can ask questions. You can make comments. And uh, we will hope that you'll uh, say hi and introduce yourself. Tell us where you're watching from. That's always nice to see. Um, and how can you support the Laidback Back Report? Well, you can like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. You can click that little white eye right up there. It'll take you to the Laidback Black Report website where you can find lots more information, past shows, what's coming up. You can even buy a Laidback Black Report hat and you can become a Patreon member. All that stuff at laidbackblackreport.com. All right. The uh, show today is brought to you by our amazing sponsors, they are TerraCycle, makers of exquisite recumbent parts and accessories for your bent. Don't just trike, adventure trike. TerraCycle's racks and bags are like having a personal Sherpa, but without the questionable ethics. And Trailside Trikes, a fine recumbent trike shop on the Withlacoochee Trail in Florida. And TerraTrike Greenspeed. Find your freedom this spring with TerraTrike's Spring Sale. Experience the thrill of touring the open road with unbeatable deals on the TerraTrike GTS, Spider, and their new and improved electrifying Boost Kit E+. Hurry, these savings won't last long and sale ends May 31st. So check out TerraTrike.com for details. And... Laidback Cycles, the top USA dealer for TerraTrike and the premier source for CatTrike Ice and Green Speed. 
we give you the freedom to ride and avenue trikes with the gearing you need and the comfort you want it's time to enjoy riding again they're in stock ready to ship and only 1995 dealer inquiries are welcome and azub they are a three-time winner of the trike of the year award and have brought several unique technological solutions to the world of recumbent bikes. For example, the titanium front suspension on the tie fly trike. Combined with the tuned rear suspension, it provides its owner with absolute comfort throughout the ride. And recumbent PDX. With a 150 trike inventory, recumbent PDX is the West Coast's only cat trike megastore. We have over 20 trikes on our showroom floor just waiting for you to test ride through our beautiful Portland neighborhood. Call or email to schedule your test ride today. And Connecticut Yankee Peddler. We feature multiple brands of trikes, including electric assist models. Test rides in Southern Iowa hospitality are always available at our mega store in Cheriton. All right, guys, let's jump into uh, the show with a news report from Recumbent.News' own Hans Agala. Let's have a look. Hi, guys. Hans Agala from Recumbent.News here once again with the Recumbent News report for you. Uh, last time, the Lightback Bike Report was almost all about the Cat Trike Factory Tour. And later on, I wrote an article about a similar, let's say, event at the HP Velotechnic headquarter, which was HP Velotechnic Dealer Day or Dealer Event. Uh, so only for dealers, but you can read the article and you can see a very interesting photos there giving you some kind of behind the scenes uh, look into the company and into the atmosphere there. Another article I wrote was five reasons why the Spetsy show is going to be better than last year, this time. It was actually a press release that came from the organizers, from the Wolf and Wolf guys. We should call them Spetsy guys nowadays. And I did some tweaks here and there, but those five reasons are that you are not going to stay so long in the queues at the entrance when purchasing the tickets because you can purchase them ahead online. There will be more exhibitors, actually dealers, selling stuff. So recumbent related stuff. I don't know exactly what everything will be available there, but there will be more of them. It is going to be easier to get out of the old textile factory on the outside road and the long three kilometers, you know, two miles long test road there because you have to have some kind of approval from the manufacturers that you can go outside and so on and so forth. But this is going to be easier and faster and smoother this year. Another reason is that there is an online directory at the specialrabmesse.de website, which links to the manufacturers as well. So you can get better organized. Maybe you can find links to the to the exhibitors after the show when you need to find out about your, you know, whatever, about an interesting product you have seen there. So this is, uh, this is better. And then they say that there is a dealer time 
on Friday means that the manufacturers can meet with the dealers on Friday. I'm not sure how that is going to work, although I have asked for something like that, but not in this format. However, I don't think that any of those five reasons are important. What I think is important and why you should come to the Spetsy show is that last year, the concept of the Spetsy show in Lauchringen in different location than it was 24 editions before. And the textile factory and the atmosphere and the number of exhibitors and the number of visitors and everything around proved that the Spetsy show is in good hands, that it continues the direction we want it to continue, we wanted it to continue, and that it is going to be a great and better show just by the fact that I believe more people will come, the atmosphere will be even better, all the little childhood diseases will kind of disappear or many of them will disappear and it is simply going to be a great recumbent event. So I hope you, I will meet with you there and I hope that next time we will be able to talk about it for hours. No, no, no. Not hours long laid back bike report, of course, but there will be a lot of stories from the show. Another interesting story that I have noticed was from a guy called Alistair. Alistair probably don't have the right pronunciation. He is from Newcastle in the UK, lives with Parkinson disease, rides strikes and or his beloved ice strike. And he had issues to get on his favorite cycle path because there were some barriers. And he went into a battle with the city council there and won the battle. And the, the city council will need to remove or to adjust the barriers so that the trikes and hand bikes and other similar vehicles can enter the cycle path. So I think this is quite an interesting topic uh, because we often find out that the barriers, different types of barriers are just for a standard, ordinary upright bikes and for recumbents and even velomobiles, it's getting to, it is quite difficult to, to pass them. So maybe this one issue will kind of increase the awareness that if we are making any barriers, we have to have in mind all those other types of bicycles and child trailers and, you know, stuff like this. And finally, one Velomobile uh, news from coming from the Velomobile, uh, Velomobile NL from Netherlands. Uh, guys there made a special cargo hood for Quatrevelo. Quatrevelo. Quatrevelo simply for their Velomobile Quad that has quite a large cargo space behind the rider. And by making the hood wider in the bag, you can get a bigger box into the Velomobile and still be, you know, protected from the elements and be aerodynamic enough to ride fast. And because I am a lot on the side of practical use of velomobiles and light electric vehicles, as many people call the new style velomobiles, I like this adjustment. So yeah, this is it. Enjoy the rest of the show and see you next time.
All right. Thank you, Hansa. Look forward to seeing you in person uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, very exciting and appreciate that news report. So, all right, let's move on to the rest of the show now, starting with Northland Velo. So I had a chance to uh, sit down with uh, Ben Park uh, last week. We chatted all about uh, his company and his plans. And I think you're going to enjoy the information coming up right now. We are here with my pal Ben Park in Minnesota. He of Northland Velo, and we're excited to talk to him today about uh, Velomobiles and what he's up to. Ben, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Gary? Doing great. Let's uh, let's start out, uh, for those who don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself and then maybe about your recumbent self. Yeah. So I am a private music instructor. I teach brass lessons. And in my free time, I dabble with bicycles. Lots of bicycles. Um, I got into riding recumbents because I was looking for a more comfortable bicycle, like, you know, pretty much all of us are with recumbents. And I don't even remember how I ran across them. Maybe I saw an ad on Craigslist or something, but I thought, hey, that looks like something that I can ride with my bad back. And so I bought a, a real cheap uh, <clears throat> Easy Racers Easy One Light and uh, started cycling around here in Minneapolis. And N plus one happened, and I ended up with several recumbents. And uh, over time, I thought, you know, I spend maybe six months of the year riding outside and the other six riding inside. I don't like this. So I started thinking about, well, <clears throat> maybe I'll get a, a trike and I'll put a core plast shell on it and I'll use that for riding in winter. So I tried that and I thought, nah, this is just, this feels cheap. So I got the brilliant idea <clears throat> that I was going to build a Velomobile and I built a uh, cedar strip kayak technique Velomobile out of um, cedar strips and fiberglass. And <clears throat> when I got it done, it ended up weighing 90 pounds. And it, it certainly was an improvement, but the 90 pounds kind of took some of the fun out of riding. So I thought, okay, I think I can justify now realizing how much work goes into this buying a used Velomobile. So I got to use Quest. And that was that was great. <clears throat> I thought I was going to use it for uh, for research to, Im to improve the one that I built. But it was a lot better than mine. And I ended up... Uh, riding that for a year and taking a camping trip with it. And I thought, okay, no, <clears throat> it's still too heavy. It's still not efficient enough. So N plus one, the ambassador program came along and I thought this is my chance to get a book. So I ended up getting involved with Felmobile World, um, partly because I roasted my backside off in a quest on a camping trip and decided I needed something better. And um, <clears throat> that one thing led to another. I got really involved with um, doing research about what the book was, what the design concept behind it was, and sharing what I was reading online. And then I got involved helping with the import process. And next thing I know, I'm a sales representative for Velomobile World. At some point between then and you became a dealer, you started thinking about why you should become an ambassador. Why? you should uh, should become a, a, a someone who spreads the word about Velomobiles. Tell me about that. Why, what did you see around you that uh, told you other people might get the same advantages of this as you did? Yeah. I just find it fun to ride. You know, I, the hope is that over time, Velomobiles can start to reduce our dependence on automobiles uh, and the environmental impact in that and the traffic congestion that comes with that and also be a way to help um, help us get healthier by cycling more. But as much as those are all good things, the reason that I have ended up basically going car free since my book came is because I just like riding so much. It's so much more fun than sitting in a car in traffic and fighting for space on the road. I get a lot more respect on the road in a Velomobile than I do in a car just because it's so unusual and people think it's so cool. They want to know what it is. And so, yeah, I think for me, I just want to help other people get that same enjoyment that I get. I'm so much 
so much better off uh, as far as mental and physical health since I've started cycling everywhere that I want to see other people have that same advantage because I see so many people are just kind of not that happy and they're not enjoying life that much and we're rushing to get places. And I think having a automobile is a great way to help us kind of slow down and to take our time and enjoy the process of getting from A to B. Okay, let's extend that a little bit. So first of all, you mentioned car replacement, essentially. This mm-hmm. is the life that you live, which is great. But I, I, to be honest, I, I don't see that as expanding to huge numbers of people. But I can see more reasons for people to – I understand that you would love to see that as I would as well. But, um, yeah. but, but what about folks who aren't necessarily going car-free but do see maybe a, a use for a velomobile such as uh, commuting – uh, touring and things like this. So what what is your uh, experience along those lines? And would you recommend it for other reasons as well? Yeah. The cool thing about a Velomobile is just the amount of flexibility that it gives because it's so aerodynamically efficient and you've got the weather protection. It's something that can be used for basically anything. I do touring with mine. I, I went uh, for two weeks last summer touring through the foothills of the Alps uh, with a W9 Velomobile. I've got another tour planned for two weeks this summer in a bilk. Um, I'm going to go over two Alpine passes, and mm, thankfully they're short ones. But it's great for long-distance touring because you don't have to worry about, you know, um, rifling through panniers to find stuff because you've got it all right there beside you in the Velomobile. It, the panniers aren't going to slow you down because it's built into the shell. So you, you don't have any sort of aerodynamic penalty. You've got the weather protection with it. You've got increased visibility in traffic. So and that in combined with the fact that you can go a lot further for the same amount of effort means that whereas I might cover 30 or 40 miles a day with my recumbent in a Velomobile, 60, 70 mile days are no problem. And there are people who go way more than that in a day, but I, I stop too much for pastries and pictures. And then, of course, there's the option to commute with it. That's what I do with, with my book. Uh, it's a way that I can get my exercise in and take care of my commute. And I end up actually saving time in my day because I'm not taking time out to drive, you know, 30 minutes back and forth to, to the lessons, plus, you know, another 45 minutes to to do my cycling exercise down in the basement on the trainer. I combine those two together and I end up saving probably a half hour for my day every day. Plus I don't have the expense of gas and insurance and all that kind of stuff. So it's great for commuting. I use it for running errands. I go for longer rides on the weekend just because it's fun to ride and I like to get out and get some fresh air. So yeah, anything you can use a bike for, you can use a Velomobile for. All right. Well, let's talk about one of the other advantages of Velomobiles to various extents, depending on which one you have, and that's speed. So I know this is not your top priority, but for some folks it is, and there are some speed advantages to the bulk and and various other Velomobiles. Can you talk about Velomobile speed and maybe uh, tell us about, if you were more interested in speed, maybe what you'd be looking at there? So the cool thing about the book is besides being incredibly practical and fitting a ridiculously large range of riders, it's also one of the most aerodynamically efficient velomobiles. I don't necessarily talk about speed as I do about efficiency. So it's the amount of effort that it takes to go a given speed. And the book is up there in the top category. The only models right now that are actually faster are the little tiny Snook and the very narrow Milan SL. And even the Milan SL, the advantage doesn't start to show up until you're up into the mid 30 mile an hour range. So the the bulk is pretty incredible that way. Where I might be cruising like 16 to 18 miles an hour on a recumbent, maybe edging up around 19 or 20, and the bulk 25 to 30 is the same amount of effort on the flat.
So you've talked about the bulk here, and uh, clearly this is what you uh, most likely will recommend to most of the folks coming to ask you about Velmobiles, uh, which is which is great. Um, what other Velos do you sell, or are you anticipating selling uh, at Northland Velo? So we have a container that left the factory on Tuesday, and God willing, in Port of Baltimore, willing. We'll get here in a second week in May. And in that, I have six bilks for stock and two M9s. And two of the bilks are pretty much already spoken for. So I still have four left for the time being. Um, I also can sell the DF, the DFXL. I can sell the Milan GT, the Milan SL. And I can sell any of the Alpha models, the Alpha 7, M9, W9, A9.2. I probably won't carry the new W9S just because there's a limit to how much space I have in my garage. Of course. <laughs> right. And until you build that huge warehouse in your backyard that you've been working right. on. So. <laughs> right. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So. So just so the, the audience understands, uh, you, you will generally think about uh, recommending the bulk to most of mm -hmm. the people that I talk to you. But if they have some other uh, preferences or want to try some other things out, uh, you can still take care of almost any Velomobile need, yeah? Yes. It, I carry anything that is carried by um, Velomobile World. So that leaves out the QV and the Snook. And the Quest, there's some confusion about whether that's still in production or not. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get involved in that one because I don't sell those models. But any of the models, the Milans, the the DF, um, the Alphas, and the Book, those I all carry, which is the majority of what's getting produced right now, anyway. Good. And then you had mentioned to me a couple of weeks ago uh, about a possible new larger version of the bulk. Is that something you want to talk about? I've been pushing for it. I don't make any promises, but I think there's definitely a need for it. The The M9 and the A9.2 right now are, are the alternative for people who want more space. The kind of um, The M9 is kind of a quest-sized velomobile, but with really good handling and wind and much more stiffness than a lot of the earlier quests in particular had. So if, if it's somebody that really wants to be able to spread out, there are alternatives. Um, the tricky part with those is that it's better to come here to pick them up just because it, it takes a little bit of experience to set up the seat system. It's not, it's not the quick kind of set and forget it that the book is. It involves drilling holes in the seats and positioning things around to get it in just the right place. So for that, for people that want to go that route, it's better to pick that up in person. Okay. Let's, that kind of neatly takes us to my next series of questions, with half, which have to do with your the specific services that you offer yep. or plan to offer there uh, at Northland Velo. So let's talk about those. What, what kinds of things besides purchasing a Velomobile – can folks expect from you? Yeah. Uh, at the moment, I think I'm the only one that's able to offer carbon fiber repair. Having built a Velomobile, I do have some experience more than I'd li like to admit with working with uh, composites. And I got to watch the uh, composite layup team when I was at Velomobile World last week too, and kind of pick up a few of their tips and tricks. And I will probably be back there in July and we'll we'll talk about the reason for that a little bit later. But each time I go over there, I'm hoping that I can pick up more skills that I can bring back here to help with repair. Then, of course, I can you know uh, work with people on other areas as far as maintenance uh, intervals and repair and stuff on their bikes. And I also have a stockpile of parts coming in the container shipment. And in fact, I'm using a box for a client with some parts in it as my stand for my computer at the moment. So I try about once a month to send out a shipment of parts that people are looking for, derail your covers, um, other standard kind of pieces as people need to replace their chain or um, 
idlers, uh, I, I don't know, common stuff, chain tubes, that sort of thing. Okay, sounds good. All right, let's um, let's take a little step back here. So uh, the customer who is interested in a Velomobile but mm -hmm. is not really well-versed, doesn't really know that much about it, but is interested enough to like check them out. Let's yeah. talk about the process. So I live in Ohio and I want to find out what this bulk is all about and maybe mm -hmm. actually sit in one, ride one a little bit. How yeah. does this process work? The best way to do it would be to come to my dealership because I'm going to have the most experience finding the perfect fit. I've got a really nice uh, area to go for test rides. We've got bike trail here. We've got some uh, designated bike routes in the area. We've got a few steep but short hills so you can try climbing and stuff. So the, the ideal scenario would be to come here, but I also have some contacts with uh, bulk riders around the U.S. that will sometimes be willing to do me a favor and let somebody stop by and at least sit in the bike. And some of them will let them take it out for a test drive, too. So we have that option as well. Okay. All right. Let's move on to uh, let's move on to Romania. So you mentioned briefly there before that you have recently returned from a trip to Velomobile World with uh, Jan and and got a chance to uh, look around the factory and I don't know what all. So maybe this is a good point for you to tell us. Tell us about the trip to Romania. What did you see? What did you learn? Yeah, so originally I was going to go over for a week of kind of watching everybody work, but it ended up that I spent most of my time working on preparing bikes for the container shipment. So we have an inspection process of a 15 page document. And I'm actually, as we're speaking, I'm uploading a, well, it, it's already uploaded, but it'll go live tomorrow, a video about the production process and what goes into preparing for the container shipment. Uh, on my end, it's always been, I just take the order, I send it in, and then they take care of it from there. But we also wanna make sure with 23 Velomobiles coming to the US at the same time, that all 23 of those Velomobiles are ready to hit the road when they get here, that we're not you know, missing some small little detail or we didn't get all of the requested options and, and stuff. So I ended up spending most of my week there uh, going through each single one of those Velomobiles, going through that 15 page document and making sure that absolutely everything was perfect. And I was actually the third or fourth step in the inspection process. So if things got past that, then we <laughs> we really screwed up. But I, no, things, uh, things are really well prepared. And I really enjoyed watching everybody work. Uh, you know, I've built a Velomobile, so I have some degree of understanding of what goes into it. But it's something altogether different when you actually are there at the factory and you see all of the technology that goes into these and how complex a process it actually is to build a Velomobile, you begin to understand that the price that that these come at is actually a bargain because it's it's a lot of work. It's a four week build process. There's not a lot of automation involved with uh, in the industrial building of Velomobiles. It's a pretty much hands hands on, uh, handmade yep. type of thing, and a relatively slow process. How long does it take them to? And this is about as fast as they can be built. How long yep. does it take them to build a Velomobile? Four weeks. There's a, the composite process alone takes close to a week because uh, you've got the initial layup process and then it's got a cure in an oven for 48 hours. Then you've got to join the different portions of the shell together. Then it's got to cure another 24 hours. And then you've got to go to paint. Uh, the whole shell gets covered in um, body filler because if there's any little pinholes in the epoxy resin, when you go to paint it, it's going to screw up the paint job. So they've got to, they've got to fill it They've got to sand it perfectly smooth. Then you've got to put primer on it. There's um, multi-stage paint. It's got to be polished. And then it can finally go to the assembly stage. And the assembly stage takes another week or so. 
if we really, really pushed it, maybe we could pull one off in three weeks, but you'd have to start using a little bit faster cure resin. And that gets a little bit more complicated in the layup of the fabric and stuff. Okay. Yeah, that makes great sense. So, well, it sounds like you had a great time and you did yeah. learn a lot and uh, that's going to go a long way to helping you in mm -hmm. both your maintenance, repair, and, and sales, I think, too. So, yeah. all right. Well, in terms of, uh, of sales, uh, one of the ways that you can interface besides at your actual location there is at yeah. events. So, uh, quickly, I know, I don't, I'm sure you're not heading to Spetsy, but we're going to be heading down to Spetsy in Germany. And I assume Jan will be back there again, uh, for Velomobile World. Yeah. Yep. Yep. He's planning to go and he'll have, uh, a couple of big announcements at Spetsy that I won't I won't spoil for anybody yet. I'll let him do those. But he's got a couple of couple of big announcements, and uh, he said he's going to have the new W9S there from Daniel Fenn. Presumably, so we'll we'll see if that happens. That's kind of up to Daniel to to get that prepared in time. But that's the plan. Very nice. The other yeah. event, the other event is the major recumbent show here in the States and that's CycleCon. You were there. We saw you last yep. year and did an interview and I expect you'll be back. What are the plans for CycleCon in September this year? We have big, we have big plans. So last year we showed up with four Velomobiles to display that we had pre-sold and uh, Jan has been dreaming for a while about going really big. This year, we're going to take four Velomobiles plus another 20 or 32. We're going to bring a 40-foot container, and uh, those extra spaces in the container will be for client bikes. So it's an opportunity, especially for people on the East Coast, to get a, a really good deal on shipping. Uh, you have the opportunity to come to CycleCon and pick up the bike, and we're going to have a team there that's going to help get the bikes dialed in and set up. There's a nice trail network there for people to go out and get their first riding experience. We're gonna have uh, an opportunity for everybody to get together and network uh, with current Velomobile riders and for new riders to meet other veterans and get some tips and tricks from them. So it's a pretty awesome opportunity. It's similar kind of setup to what we're doing with the container shipment that's coming here to Minneapolis in a few weeks. So, Ben, that's great. Uh, I think we've summed up what it is you do there, the excitement uh, of Northland Velo right now. How can folks uh, now get uh, in touch with you? How can they find out more? Best way is to contact me through my website at www.northlandvelo.com. I have a link there where they can set up a consult through uh, Calendly. And uh, it's got a schedule of when I'm available. Uh, there's a contact form on the website where they can send me an email. Uh, I don't know if my phone number is posted on there, but since this is a side job for me, it's generally better to set up a consult and then you're guaranteed you'll actually be able to talk to me at a time that works for both of us. All of the model of Velomobiles that I carry are listed on the website. And I recently set up uh, another uh, page on the website that lists all the Velomobiles that I have in stock. So everything that's coming in the container that will be available in May is listed on the website. And you can already reserve and purchase those in advance. If, if you wait till the container gets here, I can't guarantee very many of them will be left because I've I've had quite a bit of contact about them. Good. Fair enough. All right, Ben. So let's finish up this conversation with uh, something else that you do. It's related, but you also make some amazing YouTube videos, which uh, I'm a big fan of what you do. So I thought maybe we finish up talking a little bit about what you've done, what some of the favorite things you've done and what your plans are for your YouTube channel. Yeah, um, my, the biggest thing for me with the YouTube channel is just to get information available for people. There's uh, there's lots of videos of Velomobiles on the internet, but a lot of it is just, ooh, I went really fast down a hill. Well, I'm not real interested in that. I want to know what else can you do with a Velomobile. So I try to make uh, videos about what I do with mine, about how I commute with it, how I plan my routes, um, what I do for safety and traffic. 
I make some maintenance videos. I've got some videos on what to do as a beginner in, with a Velomobile, which, uh, how to climb in and out, how to get it set up, what to bring with when you're going for a ride. And uh, I also make some videos just for fun, like like the Velo Hero series, which sadly didn't go as viral as I was hoping. I have some. I have one very entertaining video where I take my cats for a ride in my Velomobile. <laughs> They actually enjoyed it. You'd be surprised. Uh, and and then just some general videos about uh, about the technology in Velomobiles, about the speed potential, um, about the production process. I have one um, going live soon about uh, what goes into preparing for the container shipment. So I try to get a, a variety of, of concepts around Velomobiles so that people Pretty much anybody that's looking for information on, on Velomobiles can find a video on my channel about it. Very good. Well, I think uh, you do that and you do it in a very entertaining way, Ben. So I hope folks will tune in. Uh, I don't think you mentioned the name of your channel. MN Velo Guy. MN as in Minnesota, Velo as in Velomobile, Guy as in me. Good. So if you look up MN Velo Guy and on uh, YouTube, you'll yep. get a chance to see some of these great videos that Ben has put together. All right, Ben. So I think we'll wrap it up. Leave it there. Uh, any final words for us? Yeah. Um, thanks for having me on. Uh, it's it's wonderful to have an opportunity to uh, talk a little bit more about Northland Velo and um I right now I'm the primary dealer in the U.S. I'm also sales rep for Velomobile World, and uh, I can take orders from anywhere in the U.S. I've got people uh, with orders coming in the container from Washington State, Arizona, Texas, Pennsylvania, Ohio. Uh, I just shipped a couple of books to guys down in Florida, so I've got clients all over the U.S., which is I think a lot of fun. I'd love to see more people locally, but uh, it's neat to see Velomobiles go to such a, a wide range of areas. Absolutely. Well, I think you're doing it, pal. It's, uh, it's very impressive for what I've seen so far. And uh, so I look forward to uh, seeing you in person in September uh, yeah. at CycleCon. And in the meantime, best of luck with all the shipments and the, uh, and the sales of, of uh, Northland Velo. So thanks a lot, yeah. Ben Park. Thanks for having me. Okay. And there is Ben joining us live. Ben, great to have you with us uh, live today. Let's uh, continue the discussion and maybe answer some questions. And I know you have, uh, you mentioned in the chat there, you have some updates for folks. One yep. thing I, before I forget about the, um, about your YouTube channel, uh, I, we chatted about this. So MN, what was the name that you said, Emin? Emin Velo Guy. And, and it's also Northland Velo, no, yeah. right as well. It's merged, so you can yeah. also look it up under Northland Velo. And I also noticed, was that uh, yesterday or this morning, you had posted uh, on Facebook something about another police stop? And <laughs> you've had you've had videos about that. You want to comment on that before we go on? or? Oh, yeah. So I was just finishing my ride, and I was uh... – sitting in the left turn lane at a stoplight and I was sitting there for like 15, 20 seconds and this police car pulls up behind me and instantly puts his lights on. I'm like, what did I do? I'm like <laughs> sitting at the stoplight. Uh, so he walks up to me and he's like, what is this? I'm like, well, it's my bike. <laughs> he's like, well, I've never seen something like this. And I'm like, well, I ride here all the time. <laughs> I wave at a police cruiser every time I go out for a ride. They're always around. It's like, oh, well, I've never seen it. It's like, does it have a motor? No. Okay. Bye. <laughs> so that was quick, at least. It was very quick. Yep. <laughs> yep. He All kept right, it, but it like, under 30 seconds. That's something that uh, that many, maybe most Velomobile uh, riders have come to expect is being stopped by the police yeah. who just don't seem to know what it is. All right. Um do you want to let's go through some questions and then we'll talk about uh, updates and uh, any summaries you want to talk about, if you would. All right. So uh, here we go. So Daryl Jordan 
uh, like the part about uh, picking up uh, pastries and such. But uh, this kind of opened up a bit of a discussion on the chat I saw, uh, uh, parking and security. So I, I don't think you have any problem actually finding a place to park. I think he means when you have to leave the Velo, how does one secure it? Bike lock through the rear wheel. You've got to have special tools and the know-how to figure out how to get that rear wheel out of a single-sided swing arm. Um, while that's a little bit of a kind of a faff process when you have to do repairs, it is very handy for security reasons. Um, and then I put a motorcycle cover over top and I just kind of park it over in a corner and the cover on top just kind of works as an invisibility cloak. And I've been doing this for a couple of years and no one's ever bothered the bike. Maybe, okay. maybe people in Minnesota are just less inquisitive it's our Scandinavian heritage or something, but you no, know, it's never been a problem. All right. Well, here's my buddy, Alan Goodman. He's not in Scandinavia. He's actually in England. Mm -hmm. And um, so he's saying that for him, theft isn't so much of an issue as vandalism. And I have to be fair, I've heard a lot of uh, Velonauts talk about there's some outright vandalism, but also just good, well-intentioned people. Uh, you draw attention, kids come over, and they climb all over it, and people try to sit in it if you're not close by. I, I, I'm guessing you're well aware of this. How do you handle the, either vandalism or unintentional damage kind of things? That's where the cover comes in handy, because the fact that it's covered, one, is kind of a deterrent that, well, okay, it's extra effort to reach up, you know, pull up the cover and figure what's underneath it. And, and two, again, it just kind of makes it invisible. So unless somebody sees you when you're parking or you're loading up afterwards, they're probably not even going to notice that it's there. And that even at the high school where I go to, where I think most people know what's under the cover, that seems to be enough of a deterrent to get them to leave it alone. And some of the fragile comments come from people that have had some of the older model of Velomobiles, like the Quest where the top was just kind of a cover. It, it was very thin. It was very easily broken. With a model like the Bulk, the, the top of the Velomobile is, is pretty strong because of the, the stiffener going up to the top of the Velomobile. So if somebody were to sit on it, it probably wouldn't crack. I haven't personally experimented with that, but from what Giannis told me, that shouldn't be as much of an issue with some of the newer models like the book because of how they're built. So that is kind of a helpful side benefit of the way they're designed now. All right. Let's take a quick tangent uh, talking about my pal, Alan Goodman. Alan uh, is one of the guys responsible uh, for the world championships, which are back in Kent in the UK again this year. And, uh, I was there to watch them back in 2018, uh, where I met Alan for the first time. Uh, great folks uh, with the British Human Power Club there involved. And so uh, Velomobiles will be raced there. I can guarantee you that's how I'm kind of bringing this all together. So uh, good luck with that, Alan. I wish I could be there with you this year. Um, but if you're anywhere close uh, in, uh, in uh, the UK or in Europe and you can get to, to Kent uh, this summer, uh, it's just a blast and a great way to compete. So uh, good luck with that, Alan. All right, uh, let's move on to, okay, so Daryl Jordan asked about the Pebble and Volantec. Uh, I just, let's talk about some comparisons of things that you don't actually sell. Other Velomobiles, of course, other brands maybe that you don't sell and light electric vehicles, of which, uh, you know, the, the Velmobiles that you sell uh, can be, uh, uh, E-Assist can be added to them and be, they become light electric vehicles, um, like the pod bike and those others. How would you compare what you could do with those with these other uh, examples? Yeah, the pedal, uh, Pebble and the Velum Tech, um, while you could ride them without assist, uh, because of the weight, they're not going to be quite as fast and efficient. One of the things that's really nice about the models that Velomobile World produces is that because they're so light and they're so efficient, they don't need the electric assist. And that opens up, you know, a whole nother 
world of possibilities. One, you don't have to worry about electrical battery fires, which some of the cheaper e-bikes have had problems with. You also have the ability to go just however far your legs can take you. And you don't have to worry about, am I going to run out of battery power? And then I've got this heavy vehicle that I've got to try to pedal back home. At the same time, if you're somebody that really feels that you need the electric assist, you live in a really hilly area, or there's a lot of stop and start, you do have the flexibility to install electric assist. And I'll talk about that maybe a little bit more in a, in a bit when we, when we approach a different topic that's, that's coming up later. But wow. uh, yeah, the, you know, there's the, the cheaper price point of the Vellum tech, which people have found appealing. Um, but I'll address that again in a little bit. Okay, good enough. And I think that's uh, most of the questions from the chat. Uh, Trey, can you bring Peter up? Peter, I think you might have had uh, something to say or a question to ask. Go ahead, Peter. <clears throat> well, the first thing I was going to ask was about locking it, but I guess I won't. <laughs> Uh, is Velmobile insurance available? Yes. I've I've priced it before and it's like 50 bucks a month. So over time, you end up basically paying for the price of the Velmobile. The way I look at it is if I do something stupid that causes an accident, I probably should pay for it anyway because I was the idiot. Um, in the rest of the cases, I run a motorcycle camera system on my bike so that if somebody does something stupid, like not stopping before turning right at a stop sign when their view is obscured by a giant SUV, which may or may not have happened yesterday. I have a record of that. Should I actually get hit? You send it into the insurance. There's no refuting that their client was the idiot. They pay out. Okay. I was also thinking about the possibility of someone damaging while it's parked. Ah, <clears throat> yeah. Then you got to read the fine print on on the insurance policy and make sure that's something that they're actually going to cover because sometimes they'll find sneaky ways to get out of that about you know if it's not locked to a certain kind of thing in a certain kind of location then they won't cover it but there yeah there are insurance policies out there that are, are a possibility okay good can you okay, is that it for you peter well i I've been watching Velomobiles for a long time. We've had uh, two or three used ones in the shop. We actually have one in the museum now from the mid eighties. It's gargantuan. Um, we're planning to rebuild that. In order to work on that, really you pretty much have to disassemble the frame and remove it from the shelf. <laughs> but we'll do that. Made in Colorado, I guess. Um, but for, I also went and rode well, one of the elves at the factory uh, when they were still made. And I was very impressed that the from the ones I've seen at the shows and stuff that uh, and the ones that have been in the shop. You know, there's fast automobiles and then there's hyper practical monsters like the elf, you know, mm -hmm. which, hey, if you lived in Manhattan, that could be great. But I don't. And I think that there's going to be. I think the practical automobile, which you said you like. Uh, I think that's going to be the successful vehicle at some point. Racers are cool. Speed is nice, but something that you can carry, you know, whatever, a 50 pound bag of dog food and. Uh, Traditionally, when, how many cases of beer? One can well, that's, in is yeah, also you, could, a you could measure yes. it that way. <laughs> in Europe, for sure. Mm -hmm. But they, you know, they need to be. Our, the bike shop here has got 40 inch doors and the one we've got in the museum won't fit through the door. So, right. And the elf was f just over four feet. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't put them in a tractor trailer side by side. Mm -hmm. So they would hand deliver them. They would have someone. Hand, so this getting it from North Carolina to us in New York was like $1,500 or something. Yeah. You know, maybe it was more than that. It was, I thought a lot. Um, so, you know, the, and it was, I just, it's, I love seeing these things come together. I think there's, they're getting more practical and practical ones are getting faster. And yep. that's going to be, 
that's going to be the issue. I think the electric assist with dynamic braking is a fantastic idea. We have hills. A big hill around here would be like 400 feet, vertical feet in a mile. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to want an electric assist on that one probably. <clears throat> but I like what everybody says about visibility and getting more respect from drivers. Although around here, drivers are pretty nice, except the occasional diesel pickup truck with an attitude. They occasionally have attitudes, but uh, I think they're great. I continue to think they're going to become popular and I, I, uh, I hope you do really well. I think, I, I think that's great. I, I'm excited. I want to see you at, uh, at RCC in Ohio this, this September. I'm looking forward you to will. it. Yeah. I'll bring and my Do you want to there. respond to that, uh, Ben? Or Yeah. <laughs> I go grocery shopping with my book every week. And I mean, there's just one of me in the house plus the cats. So I don't have a problem fitting my groceries in. But there is a trailer that's coming. And I saw the, the uh, prototype at the factory. That thing is massive. You could easily fit a lot of dog food in the back of that thing plus your groceries for the whole family and that's part of the concept of of making especially the book line more practical for everyday use uh, the designer the primary designer Jens Bookbesch, is really really uh really really devoted to this concept of making velomobiles as practical but still maintaining that efficiency and He's got a lot of ideas um, kind of queued up that he's working on where he can continue to build on this concept. And that's part of what, what has me so excited about Velomobiles because, yeah, they're fun to, to, to go riding for sport and for exercise in all kinds of weather. But there's also this really practical side where because it's such a large, brightly colored, visible in traffic kind of op option, that has that carrying capacity that can be used year round, it can become something that a family could replace one of their cars with, or for a single guy like me, I really don't need to use a car anymore because I can just do it all with the Velomobile and I have more fun doing it. So it's, it's, a, really, it's a really practical and flexible option in the market. And at first, when I was making sales, it was just people who were looking for something that's really fast and they wanted the latest and greatest. And now I'm starting to get a lot more requests from people that are like, you know, I'm looking for a car alternative. I heard about Velomobiles. Tell me more. And that's something that I'm really excited about because that means that our outreach into the cycling community is, is starting to catch on and people are starting to learn about this as an alternative. Very nice. Uh, Trey, I'm going to let you uh, ask in a second. I do have a quick yeah. question uh, actually for Peter here. So, uh, Peter, do you know what, what Velomobile is that in the museum, that that ancient monster? Oh, do you know I what it's called? look it up. Uh, let me. All right. Well, yeah, I'm going to. another question. I'll look. Yeah, we're going to we're going to have Trey go and then you let us know as soon as you're ready. All right. All right, yep. Trey, go ahead. Do you, what suggestions do you have for those of us in the hotter, more humid states? How can we mitigate the heat? Yeah. So the first thing is make sure at least the top is white. Anytime I have somebody in a warm climate that wants some super sexy color on the top, the first thing I say is, are you intending to ride during daylight? And <laughs> if they say yes, I say, you're going to regret that color because white makes a massive difference. Even my my race hood is orange because, you know, I ride in the winter and I want bright color to contrast to the snow banks. It's just a practical thing. But even yesterday when it was around 60, having that non-white color on the top does get pretty warm when you're not moving. Uh, other options, especially with the book, is you can ride without any hood on at all. And you've got this big bathtub size opening. In fact, that's, that's what they call it on the German forum. They call it bathtub mode. Um, that gets a lot more air in and you still get a little bit of sun protection, you know, up around your feet and your legs when you're riding, but that helps, uh, the air intake in the nose brings a, a pretty good breeze in. There's the option to put seat fans behind the seat that I've seen people do. I've done that in the past myself in the quest, and that really made a, a big difference. And then just choose your time of day wisely 
try to get out earlier in the morning when it's not quite so hot and maybe not quite so humid. Some people will even ride at night. The lighting system on the book is pretty impressive. Uh, I run with dual headlights, the one up in the, the hot spot in the video. Let's see, how do I do this with my finger? I can't. But the, the module up on top of the head bump, there's a light up in the top of that. The reflective stickers, um, bright lights in the back and in the front. I think I'm actually more visible at night. So that's another possibility too. But yeah, there are things that you can do. I know a guy in the desert in Arizona who's riding his velomobile. He uses uh, like a cooling vest like astronauts will use to help keep the heat down. So there's there's things you can do. But yeah, it's possible. I've got a whole bunch of clients in Florida that go out riding in the morning and they, they love it. Good. And good deal. Peter, did you oh, sorry, Trey. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I said just good deal. Thanks. Okay. Peter, did you find the name? If not, well, I haven't. All right, it. you go. Why, when we go to the I next segment, you go find it and then see not, if you can find a name on it or whatever. I should or, add regarding no sizing, name on it. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Regarding sizing, modern velomobiles will fit through a, like a 32 inch door. The book yeah. is around yeah. 30 inches wide, so it, it's a lot more narrow than it used to be. We can get uh, 24 at least in a 40 foot shipping container. And there's still plenty of space around them. Okay, good. Very good. All right. Uh, Peter, Trey, thank you. Uh, and uh, we'll send I'll, you guys. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'll uh, send you a picture of the thing. Okay, that'd be great. We can we can maybe pop yeah. that on when, uh, when we get towards the end here. So, okay. all right. So, uh, Ben, let's finish up with, uh, with uh, a summary and any updates. I think you have some things to share as well that we, we didn't know about when we were doing the interview. So uh, go ahead, tell us what's up. Yeah, I don't know that there's much to summarize. I think we've covered everything mm -hmm. that I can think of. Uh, of course, if you have more questions, you can always contact me, info at uh, northlandvelo.com. But uh, yeah, announcements. There was a big announcement from Jan yesterday and that is regarding a new model. There's two models that he's bringing to Spetsy for the first time. And one of those is the Bulk 4 More. And the Bulk 4 More is based off of the MK1, the standard Bulk that we've been selling. And it's intended to be a budget model. We haven't announced all the particulars about it right now as, um, as far as price, but it's going to be in the same price range as other vel uh, budget velomobiles like the Velum Tech. Um, however, this model is built out of fiberglass. It retains the aerodynamic principles of the MK1. It has open wheel wells on the front. Ben, it, are these, uh, the ones you're talking about, are these in the slides that we have? Yes. Maybe this is a good time. Trey, yeah, let's go ahead and pop those up so Ben can actually uh, remark about them. Yeah, okay. the blue one is the book for more. This is fiberglass. It should come in under 65 pounds, which is remarkable for fiberglass. Those that remember the fiberglass, fiberglass Quest that were really flexible and were super heavy, like over 80 pounds, this is nothing like that. Um, I watched Jan put 900 plus watts through the drivetrain, and the amount of flex is, is like hardly there. It's really incredible. And it, it's so stiff, and it's going to be almost as aerodynamically efficient as the traditional book in the testing they've done so far. There's really no difference until you get over 45 kilometers an hour. So that's like 26, 27 miles an hour, which is going to be less than most people are riding. The intention with this is that it's something that people can use as a car replacement. It's a less expensive alternative. We have much larger access hatches, for instance, in the rear, um, there's a special cover up in the front that wasn't ready when we took these pictures, but it's a much larger um, opening up in the front so that you have plenty of room to get in there to mount a motor if you decide you want one. Um, ah, underneath between the wheels where the steering rods are, there is a removable cover there so that you can easily get underneath there to... Uh, do any sort of work in there. The open wheel wells make it easier to pull the wheel off if you need to do any maintenance on the brakes or you just want it to be easier to, um, to do maintenance or like replace tires and stuff. 
So it's a really super practical um, version of the regular book at a lower price point with the hope that we can make this accessible for more people. There's a second model that I kind of get to announce, although it was sort of mentioned earlier today in the German forum, and that is the book Urban. And this one kind of happened because when Jan told me he was making a fiberglass filmmobile, my, my immediate thought was, okay, this is going to be heavy and flexy, and I don't want to pedal that up the 9% hill to work every day. And so I asked, can you make a carbon fiber version? He said, no. But then we got to thinking about it, and we're like, you know, with the open wheel wells, we're going to have more space between the wheel wells for people with a little bit more powerful thighs. Um, we also can make a little bit more space for the feet up in the front because the ground clearance is higher. And we can do that because of the wider you know, track width. It doesn't, um, putting the higher ground clearance won't impact the handling and curves. So we were able to add two more centimeters there. And we thought, you know, the US market likes a performance bike we need something that can fit a little bit larger riders. Okay, let's go ahead and do a carbon fiber version. So this has all of the options of the standard bulk. Um, just the only differences are that the front subframe and the rear swing arm are made out of aluminum so that if something were to crack or break, it's really easy to take it to a welder and have them fix it instead of having carbon fiber parts that you've got to find somebody that knows how to work with composites to fix. So it's a it's kind of a more practical, still high performance alternative to the standard book. It'll be the same price class. And this red one is um, mine. And both of these bikes are actually in the container on their way to my dealership. So they'll be here early May available for test rides. But I'm really impressed with the design concept and especially how easy they're going to be to do maintenance on. It's almost like working on an open trike because the openings are so large. Excellent. All right. So let's get those pictures off. Uh, and uh, yeah, you got to thank you, Trey. OK, um, so that's the announcements. That pretty much brings us to, to the close before. I let you go. Let's uh, let me bring Peter back up. Peter sent me a picture, so I think it'll be it'll be great to finish off this segment, uh, seeing how far Velomobiles have come. And so, yeah, <laughs> come <yeah>. since <laughs> the early days. Uh, ben has just showed us like the very latest in the world of Velomobiles, and well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the there we go. Out. Thank you, Trey. There we are. So, uh, so yeah, uh, and you don't know what this is called. Maybe one of it's our Velodyne. viewers actually. Ni Do you know what it is? Nineteen seventy nine Velodyne. Velodyne. Yeah. Yeah. Let me double check that. Okay, and I think I have. Did you give me a second one? Cyclodyne. Here? Sorry, Cyclodyne. Oh, Cyclodyne. Yeah, yeah. So I sent there you, you know, go. That's uh, <laughs> that's like a what is that? A shoe shape thing? I don't know. Yeah, it's not, it uh, looks it looks like it's pregnant. I'm hoping it gives birth soon because I'd like one of its babies. Either that yeah. or a big nose. Well, yeah. Jimmy it's, Durante could have written that. Yeah. That's just it's a, all right. Anyways, well, thanks, uh, Peter, for, for sharing that with us. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm going to, I'm going to rebuild it and ride it around some. I'll ride, okay. The next step is to get it uh, in good enough shape that I can ride it home and get it out of the warehouse here. It's nothing if not classic. So we'll, we'll yeah, go with that. Yeah. So it's, Well, it might just be nothing. That's a possibility. <laughs> or it could be nothing. That's right. <laughs> All right, Peter. Thanks. Thanks, pal. All right. So I think with that, we're going to leave it there. Ben, what a great segment. I really appreciate everything you brought to us today. Very interesting. Very exciting. Can't wait to see where you go with this. Can't wait to see what happens. I will see you, if not sooner, for sure, in uh, in September yep. uh, here in Ohio at the uh, CycleCon show. And looking forward to seeing Jan and getting uh, eyeballs, actually, on what you're talking about uh, here at the end of the month at Spetsy. So I think we'll leave it there. Ben Park, thank you I'll so add much. One more thing. Please, finish up. Um, yeah. The two new models that I just showed are are available, hopefully, sometime this week for, for orders. And they would be something that we can get in the container shipment coming to CycleCon in September. 
that shipment, the shipping price is only five hundred dollars. Yeah, uh, you had mentioned that in the yep. in the chat. Let me put that up yep. there. Plus uh -huh. the import duty. So that's um, that's a good way to get this budget Velomobile over here for for a budget price. And, and also I, you had mentioned this as well, yeah? Yes, yes. All of the tiller steering bulks, there's four of them are on sale 10% off through April 19. So get those before they're gone as well. And um, I did ask Jan if there were enough orders, if he would consider sending a container earlier here to Minneapolis. And he didn't respond to that. But if there's enough demand, I don't see why we couldn't uh, stick an extra one in there if the if the production slots allow for it. So if you're excited about these models, get your order in quick and we'll get you a nice new Velomobile. There's some good advice, folks. All right. Thanks once again, Ben. Have a good one. We'll talk soon. Thanks for having me. Okay, you bet. All right, guys. Uh, let's move along then to uh, our uh, look at Spetsy 2024. As I mentioned earlier, Trey and I are heading down. They're very excited to uh, bring all of the information that we're going to find at each booth uh, to you in our videos. But uh, for those who still have an opportunity to get to Lochring in Germany at the end of the month, you might want to attend. And uh, and here's a few. Here's three guys that will tell you all about what's coming up at Spetsy this year. Trey. All right, guys, we are here with my pals Franz, Gabriel, and Florian from all the way from Lochringen, uh, Germany. And they are the folks who are bringing you Spetsy again this year. Gentlemen, good day. How are you? Hi, Gary. Hello, Hello, Hello Gary. Gary. It's great to see you guys. So let me start out by asking, how are the preparations going for this year's Spetsy? How are you doing with it? There is a lot to do, uh, but um, uh, we are looking forward. Uh, the Spezi will be a little bit bigger. There are um, a little more um, exhibitors, and we also will have a place outside the exhibition hall to present um, more exhibitors. More exhibitors. That's right. And so do you feel like, compared to last year at this point, do you feel like you have it a little bit more under control, even though there's a lot to go? For me personally, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, we are sure in plan, but uh, for me personally, I think sometimes why it is not easier. <laughs> um, because we do it the second time. But at the end... Uh, yeah, we are in, in plan and it will work. I think it's there is not less work to do. Um, even we do it uh, for the second time because uh, there is a lot uh, we want to do better, maybe. And um, for us, um, it's a really big part and to to uh, to have the good co com communication, conversation to the exhibitors. It's a really big part of... Um, this time now. So we will do the things better and that needs more time. Let's talk about what is most exciting for you that you have planned this year. So uh, maybe some changes you can talk about from last year and what is it that you think is going to be the most exciting part uh, that people may not expect? Yeah, I have one, but it's not official. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it um, don't comes like like this, and um, we would like to make a small trip with all exhibitors and visitors at Sunday, Saturday evening, um, to visit uh, Lauchringen with a bicycle. So maybe we will be three, four, five hundred bicycles for a small trip around um, yeah this this area. Oh, I get it. So it's a, it will be a tour. Maybe you would say yes. it's a, a bicycle tour with whoever is around to, uh, to explore Lochring. And that would be, that would be wonderful. Yes. And it will be at uh, Saturday evening. So we are looking forward. <laughs> and there uh, are some uh, new things. The, the test track will be a little bit longer. And that's important because we will have some more test bikes and there will also um, be some more micro micro 
um, cars, uh, you micro vehicles. So um, last year we had about uh, two or three, and this uh, this year it will be some more. And it's very um, cool to test these bikes. I think maybe what you're, uh, what we may may call light electric vehicles. Yeah. Is That's that what right. you mean? Like the the yes, okay, yeah. Those those are very popular. The videos that I shot individually uh, with some of those uh, some of those uh, companies were very popular. So well, that's exciting. So yeah, so that kind of gets me into my next uh, a series of questions. Would have to do with the vendors that you have lined up. So you said you're going to have a few more vendors, and yeah, I wanted you to talk about some of the highlights. So that's one of them. You're gonna we're gonna have a few more light electric vehicles. Anything else that you noticed of the vendors that are signing up that seem like it might be worthy of talking about? A new company from Freiburg, so it's uh, quite next to Lauchingen. Uh, they producing a special trailers, electric trailers, so you can uh, put them to the bicycle and have a really really big cargo bike for last mile delivery solutions. That's uh, one nice part. Mm. Then, for example, a uh, pop bike from, from Norway, Starwanger, with a, a light electric vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, great that they come. Uh, and it was from uh, 60, 60 from France. That's right. They, uh, they will produce uh, a fast light vehicle, bicycle. So um, I'm not sure what they will uh, what they will bring, but um, I think it's very interesting. I, I want to say to the to the test rig one um, because the test rig is longer. Then the reason is uh, that we go around the, the outside area, so we have an outside area for the exhibitors, and uh, they have the same option uh, to go on the test track, and that's the reason why the test rig is longer also for the light vehicles. And so we have the longer test track. And uh, one important thing is uh, we will have more uh, small parts selling companies. Yeah. So for um, uh, parts for bicycle or to, to wearing parts. Um, yes, apparel uh, yes. and clothing, accessories. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Way more Very. than last. Also, you're going to, again, bring in the uh, Innovators Lab, the test, uh, the, the folks who, who are uh, kind of making their own uh, vehicles, bikes and such, and accessories as well, and the, the experimental type of thing. Any, uh, any ideas about what we'll be seeing there? The, the uh, whole spectrum of the, the whole list. <laughs> the whole list, and there are, will be a trike uh, or a special trike um, for making chin. At the same time, um, there will be um, smaller parts, uh, a special rack, for example. Um, there are um, eight uh, inventions right now, but maybe we will be 10 again. And we will make it a bit bigger. Um, there is a public voting um, once more. Uh, this will be uh, more important than last year. Okay, let's get into the details now for folks who will maybe want to attend. Uh, Spetsy, let's tell tell our audience exactly where this is being held and when exactly it is being held. It will be in Lauchringen, so that's in the south of uh, Germany, at the 27th and 28th April. 26 with the with the dealer evening with the meet and greet for the for the dealers. And yeah, maybe uh, that's maybe we can take a minute and talk about each day then. So talk, so if Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, tell us just basically the schedule. What would you what 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 would we expect to see? So a Friday is only for the exhibitors. It's without um, uh, the visitors and but there is um, it's possible to um, to go on the tent meadow as well and for the community hall um, from Friday to Sunday. Uh, we will start at 10 o'clock, so everything opens. 
uh, we have um, breakfast for the visitors um, starting at 7.30. So um, if you like to have uh, breakfast in, before going to Spezia, you can do it uh, uh, right here. And at 11 o'clock, um, there will be the first lectures. Yes. Then maybe at six o'clock, between six and seven, maybe we will make this a uh, short trip with the bicycles around Lauchingen. And then from seven o'clock is, um, yeah, maybe party music, uh, for the whole evening. So that's Saturday and Sunday. We will have a breakfast <laughs> once more from seven thirty and open the Spezi Hall from 10 to 6 p.m. Let's talk about tickets. Um, I have an understanding that there is going to be a little bit of change now in how you're selling tickets. You can buy them online, you can buy them at the door. And so let's talk about how you buy tickets and pricing. If you can. Each visitor um, who buys his tickets before the Spezi is really important for us. and. So uh, we let the same price like last year for online ticket buying, but uh, we set up the prices one to two euros each ticket. If you buy them in front of the ticket, uh, in the in front of the Spezi, so that's actually the the only difference than last year. Okay, then so they can go to the Spezi website and buy the ticket online. Uh, it's the same price as last year if you do it that way. If you come at, during the, at the day, then you may pay a couple of euros more. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. but you can, you can still buy them online. So you, well, <laughs> so it's, you can it's take your problem. phone and buy them online right there yes. and you'll still. Yes, you can, that's no problem. <laughs> which makes it much easier for you to plan and such. So yeah. very good. Okay. Now, how about accommodation? So if folks are coming for a, a couple of days, uh, where can they stay in the area? So we have the same option uh, like last year. You have the option on the um, tent meadow uh, near the Spezi. You have the option with the mobile home on the mobile home place in Lauching is uh, 1,000 meters uh, away. Then you have the option in the opportunity, not the opportunity hall, in the community hall. Um, to overnight, uh, we have about uh, 500, 600 uh, sleeping places. And then the normally gast gastro, uh, normally um, hotels and uh, Airbnb rooms in round of Lauchingen. You have to still the possibility to, um, to use the the, the trains and buses for free with your um, Spezi ticket. So um, you can go to your hotel with um, the public trains Trans for free. Transport for free. So what you're saying is all local transportation is free with your Spezi ticket. Yeah. Yes. And then we have uh, the shuttle bus bus again, but this year is the direct uh, neighbor uh, village Tingen. He drives uh, there and back in 30 minutes. So the it's more often than last year. Last year was one hour and this year is every half an hour there will be a shuttle bus to Tingen. To Tingen, okay. To the train station. This year we have a, a wardrobe for the uh, backpackers or uh, the clothes in near of the Spezi and we have uh, in, uh, in near of the info point, we have little lockers, not high security lockers, but to uh, little lockers for uh, storage, uh, storage, uh, private uh, stuff. Yeah. Good. Well, that'll come in handy for folks. Good. Okay, fellas. Well, I appreciate so much you taking the time to share the latest about Spezi and I look so much forward to seeing you guys again uh, in a month or so. Um, thanks for coming on the Laid Back Bike Report, and uh, we will see you next month. Great. Thank you Gary, so much. Thank you. thank you, Gary. I can't wait. Lots of cool stuff in the offing, so we will bring that to you uh, next month after we uh, make our visit to Spetsy. So thanks, guys. Appreciate that. All right, let's move along then to the Pacific Trike Fest. It's not a 
a huge show like Schmetzi is, but it's a fun one, and uh, we've been there before and uh, loved it. So Mel Brzee is going to tell us all about the Pacific Trike Fest right now. Hey there, it's Mel with We're Coming PDX with some fantastic news. Uh, Pacific Trike Fest is back for 2024. It's going to be held at Portland Community College's Sylvania campus on Saturday, June 15th. This is your opportunity to test ride over 30 cat trikes, both motorized and non-motorized. So who rides a trike? Well, it could be that you've fallen out of love with your two-wheel bike because of your neck or your shoulders or your back or your knees or maybe your seat doesn't fit right on that seat anymore or maybe you're living with the effects of stroke parkinson's als surgery recovery injury recovery or maybe your balance just isn't quite right on a two-wheel bike anymore and you want the stability of three so we're going to have we're going to have over 30 trikes including motors from bosch buffang Neo Drives and Grin Technologies. We're going to have really comp cool component groups from uh, Shimano and from Roloff and from 3x3. And we're going to have all sorts of adaptive accessories for people who need a little bit of help getting on a trike. And our mechanics, Paul and Jack and their crew, are going to make sure that you got a helmet on your head and that you have a safe ride on our closed car-free loop the entire day. So tickets are at www.pacifictrikefest.com. And if you want to hear more, keep watching. If you are into hand-powered pedaling, we're also going to have hand cycles from Freedom Rider and Germany's Berkel bikes. We're going to have Baketa two-wheel recumbents. And I know it's called Trike Fest. Baketa kind of makes a really, really cool bike and they're going to be there and you're going to love them. And we're going to have VeloChair. This is an amazing product we saw a couple months ago at a trade show. It is a uh, wheelchair with pedals and we saw it, fell in love with it and it's our show and we get to invite anybody we want. So have you seen enough? No? Okay. Keep watching now, we're gonna get to the good stuff. We're gonna have Chicago style hot dogs and we're gonna have beverages and we're gonna have cake because it ain't a party without cake. Oh, and if you watch this this far, you're gonna get a little reward. The folks at Catrike have given us a villager that we are going to giveaway in the afternoon so everybody who registers for the show is entered to win and yeah you got to be there in the afternoon when your name is called if you want to win a trike oh and we're going to have some great advocacy groups we're going to have booths and presentations so what are you waiting for you got a whole day test riding cat trikes on a car free environment you're gonna have Chicago style hot dogs. You're gonna get to meet really cool vendors. And best of all, we're gonna be giving away a trike. Tickets are only $11 plus a couple bucks in ticketing fees. They're available again at www.pacifictrikefest.com. So we look forward to seeing you there. What are you waiting for? I guess we're waiting for June, but uh, look, yeah. all I got to say is, and Trey, I know is going to back me up on this. Nobody throws a party like Mel. So Absolutely. you will not, if you can get to Portland, uh, those dates do not miss this event. So Trey, we were there a few years ago, pre COVID and such had a great time. Uh, what were your thoughts about it? It was awesome. They had a well-organized event. I mean, it's just, if you anything you could ride, you got on it quickly and fast, and you could try that just allows you to try more trikes or bikes at the same time. And now it's expanded a little bit further. You've got two wheel trikes, uh, bikes that'll be there, so that's going to be awesome. And the weather is usually pretty, pretty nice out there. So, um, I'll be looking right. to if we could go, I'd be looking to escape the heat in Mississippi, obviously. But uh, 
yeah, hopefully we can get there next year. So, all right, Trey, thanks, pal. Uh, let's uh, finish up then and talk about uh, viewer submissions. We don't have one today, but uh, it's a reminder to you. If you have events or activities or something you want to show our audience uh, regarding your bent, submit it to us. We'd love to share that with our uh, with uh, the folks out there watching. So uh, you can do that at laidbackbachreport at gmail.com. And we're going to, at this point, also thank uh, people who for whom this uh, show would not be possible. That didn't come out too good. This show would not be possible without these amazing sponsors. Let's go right there. Talking about TerraCycle. Are you tired of feeling like your bent was made for someone else? TerraCycle's handlebars and stems allow you to customize your ride so you can feel like the superstar you are, even if you ride like a turtle. And Trailside Trikes. If you find yourself in Florida near the Withlacoochee Trail, Check out Andrew's shop and his amazing crew. And Terra Trike and Green Speed Trikes. Find your freedom this spring with Terra Trike Spring Sail. Experience the thrill of touring the open road with unbeatable deals on the Terra Trike GTS, Spider, and their new and improved electrifying Boost Kit E+. Hurry, these savings won't last long. And the sale ends May 31st. Check out TerraTrike.com for details. And Laidback Cycles, the top USA dealer, dealer for TerraTrike and the premier source for Cat Trike, Ice, and Green Speed. We give you the freedom to ride. And Avenue Trikes, with the gearing you need and the comfort you want, it's time to enjoy riding again. They're in stock, they're ready to ship, and only $19.95. Dealer inquiries are welcome. And Azub, in addition to titanium suspension, another technological gem brought to you by Azub is an optional folding mechanism. It's not easy, it's not only easy to operate, but works great, and it looks fantastic. And Recumbent PDX. At Trikes West Coast Mega Store, schedule your test ride on trikes with pedal assist electric from both Bosch and Bafang, roll off and schlump component groups, and adaptive builds. Experience the joy of Cat Trike and Connecticut Yankee Peddler. We feature multiple brands of trikes, including electric assist models. Test rides and Southern Iowa hospitality are always available at our mega store in Cheriton. All right, let's finish up with a couple of announcements. It will be no surprise to you watching so far today that uh, Trey and I and uh, Jim Trapp uh, and our wives will be heading uh, to Germany for Spetsy on April 27th and 28th. We Really look forward to that. I can't wait to uh, see what's uh, in store uh, at all the booths there and sharing it with all of you guys. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we can't wait for that. And our next uh, laid back back report is actually going to be May 19th. We kicked that back a couple of weeks to give us time to get back from Europe and to uh, and to put together uh, a show, which is going to be about the highlights of Spetsy before we actually get to all the videos of the individual booths and that sort of thing. We'll have a panel of folks, uh, certainly Trey and I, uh, hopefully Hansa, and maybe a few more folks who will have attended. And uh, we'll talk about what we thought were the highlights of the show. We always like sharing that with you guys. So that'll be May 19th. All right, now. How can you support the Laid Back Bike Report? Well, you can like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and click that little white eye up there to take you to the laidbackbikereport.com website where you can find much more information, previous shows, what's coming up, buy a hat, find our Patreon link where you can become a Patreon patron like all of these wonderful people here. And... Um, 
we appreciate them so much. All right, uh, Trey, bring uh, you and Peter back up. Uh, <laughs> Peter, there's one of those. There's one of those green hats that we were Doesn't talking fit about. Well with these, I... Yeah, uh, it looks great on you, Peter. I gotta mm. say. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Trying to make anything straight and pointing to things yeah, when you're wait, looking wait, at a mirror wait. image is a little yeah, difficult. Okay. But oh, wait, oh, oh, wait, oh, oh. There we go. Anyways, uh, Peter, thanks so much for joining us again today. You add so much to the show. We really appreciate that. And uh, Trey, you did a great job today, pal. That was uh, that was a lot for you, and I really appreciate you being with us. And uh, yeah, can't no wait problem. To, can't wait to be with you in a couple of weeks in Europe again. So you and Lisa, looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. So. All right. Thanks, Trey. So thanks to the crew that you just saw there. And most of all, thanks to all of you for watching this month and every month. So until our next show, I want to thank all of you for watching once again. And so long, Bent Riders.